Hey guys, I'm back. This is part two of my travel log on Explore UK. Now we are on the way to Windermere in Northwest England. Windermere is the largest natural lake in England. This is the country's most popular places for holidays and summer homes, a lake district. show you uh, our uh, meeting point if you like and I'll show you where the loose and uh, you can have a wander around uh, if you actually say if you fancy a coffee or whatever take some photos and I make it uh, 10 to Now we are boarding the cruise to experience the wonderful natural beauty of the Windermere. Please listen to our guide while watching the visuals. Okay, good morning ladies and gentlemen. Welcome on board Miss Cumbria 1 and welcome to Windermere. So we are sailing on Windermere, England's largest lake. It is 10 and a half miles in length, one mile at its widest and at its deepest 67 meters, 219 foot. It's a lake of two basins. We've got the southern basin ahead of us, the northern basins behind us. We'll be heading to the northern basin a little bit later on. Windermere's two basins are separated by the main group of islands here in Bowness Bay. We find 12 of Windermere's 18 islands in this area. Over on the right now we have Windermere's largest island. It's called Bow Isle. It is three quarters of a mile in length and it is the only privately owned and lived upon island on Windermere. There's a house on Bell Isle, and that's the famous Round House. It was built in 1774, based on a classic Roman villa, the Villa Vicenza. It wasn't liked by the locals though, at the time of its construction, and the poet Wordsworth described it as a pepper pot. So that forced the owners of the island at the time, the Kerwin family, to plant all these trees to hide the house. Works during the summer when all the trees are in bloom, but this time of year we do get to see it. So coming up very shortly on the right hand side, the roundhouse of Bal Island. And this is as far south as we're going to go today, so we're going to turn around now, cross over to the opposite side. As we do cross over, you get a view of Storrs Temple over on the left. That's that stone structure at the end of that jetty. That was built in 1804 to commemorate the British naval vips, now luxury apartments.
Bush. Hey, Bush. Is actually Windermere's smallest registered island. It's not a very good island for cat. Now the Woody the Hillside over on the left, that's called Clay Pites, stretches for about four miles down the lake shore. And this whole area used to be owned by the famous children's book author, Miss Beatrix Potter. She was a keen conservationist. She wasn't happy with what was happening to the opposite side of Windermere, where all the rich industrialists of the north of England were buying up land for their big houses. And she wanted to keep some of the natural beauty of the Lake District. So she purchased clay Heights, and this was part of 4,000 acres and 14 farms that she actually owned. And when she passed away, she very kindly donated all of that to the National Trust to again keep it exactly the same. And ahead to the left, we've got two similar sized islands coming up. These are collectively known as the Lilies of the Valley, named after the wild flowers that used to grow on them. Used to be a custom in Victorian times here for young courting couples to row out to these islands. That's what they told their parents anyway. And they apparently picked the flowers and the overpicking means that the lilies no longer grow on them. But rather romantically, they have retained the name, the Lilies of the Valley. Thompson Home. That island's partly man-made, and the reason for that, it protects all these vessels here from the strong and frequent northerly winds we experience here on Windermere. Now, Windermere is a very busy lake. It's one of the busiest inland waters in the British Isles particularly on the bank holiday weekends. Now, last year there were nearly 4,000 boats registered to sail on here. If you look at all these as we pass, they do all have registration numbers on them. You can't just turn up, you do have to register your vessel beforehand. Now, most of these boats around us now, I wouldn't say are owned by keen sailors. Most of them don't move. They're actually used as floating holiday homes. So they all are living accommodation underneath. And the reason for that, it is cheaper to have a boat on Windermere than it is to own a caravan, a cabin or a car. We do get the idea. Rises to 2,864 foot. Once again, a tiddler by your standards. Now, we do have plenty of hill walkers here in the Lake District, including <laughs> myself. I've done the Fairfield a few times. It is one of the best walks in the, here in the Lake District. So the whole horseshoe is 10 foot. Now Windermere itself, during those periods, rose nearly 3 metres in 24 hour periods. That means all these fields over on the right now, they were the water, as well as that 1.2 million pound boat house that I pointed out to you. Money well spent. So for a short period, England's largest lake got even larger. Part 3 to follow soon. Keep watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Bye.